This is a video introducing Survey Excel. Survey Excel is a complete surveying tool which provides a full graphic environment where you can work with all spatial data connected with surveying. In front of me here we've got the Survey Excel main screen. It consists of a graphics area over here and on the right we have our layers where we can um, have a list of all the graphic elements we are working with. I'll first introduce the spatial area to you. So for example, if I quickly want to have Google Maps as a background, I can click it on and it'll bring up Google Maps in the particular area where I'm working. Survey Excel supports all projections. So at the moment you can see in my bottom left hand corner, I'm displaying my data using the Allo 27 projection. However, the data, for example, Google Roads, is not in Allo 27, but Survey Excel projects it on the fly to the projection that I'm working in. Survey Excel lets you work with external files very easily. For example, here, if I want to view, say, for example, the design file, I can just drag that design file into Survey Excel. when I drag it in it's going to ask me, it recognizes it's a microstation design file and it prompts me to say do I want to have the levels of the design file explicit in my layers or not? I'm going to say yes. And of course the next question is what is the projection of that design file? At this point we could actually put in the projection with its offsets and so on but this particular design file is in the Allo 27 projection so I'll tell it to use that. Okay, now what we can do is this design file here, I'm going to turn off Google Road so I can see. It's actually got lots of spurious data, as you can see over here, which is no problem. We'll just zoom in to where the design file data is, just to show you that it's there. So for example, there we've got some workings, and we've zoomed into them. I could try and put on my Google maps again to see where this is with Google Maps. And there we go, we can see where we are relative to our Google Maps. There the workings are relative to Google Maps. Anyway, you can pull in any kind of design file. That is a particular, this is for a coal mine, where you've got board and pillar. I can remove that design file. And bring in another, a development design file for underground work. Same question, I'll also let it go by level, same projection, and there's our design file. So we can zoom in here, and there you can see our workings. I'm also overlaying the um, Google Earth, which I don't need to do, I'll actually turn it off for now, but it just shows you how we can work from with all kinds of graphic sources um, in Survey Excel. As you notice here, I'm, the way I'm zooming in and out is just with a mouse wheel. I can pan. If I just click that, I can pan. It's a full 3D world, so I can rotate. However, when I rotate, it's good to rotate about a point in the scene. To do that, I'll make sure I'm hooking a point in the scene. I click here the vertex snap option. I see it's on now. And when I now I'll hover over some vertex, the cursor changes, and I'm able to now rotate in that 3D world because this is a full 3D world that we have here in Survey Excel. Just to illustrate that point. Very good. Now I've set myself to be not looking down from the top to quickly fix that can just click here and say view from top. There we go. And when you see I move my mouse cursor here. Over here it displays the X, Y and Z, the depth of where I'm moving. So at the moment I'm moving at 122 meters below sea level. Okay. Or below, sorry, below the surface of the earth. Yeah, I mean sea level. That's right. If I wanted to quickly view it from actually zero, I can just click here quickly 
shows you my current view center. I can put a zero there and say set and that moves me now. I'm now actually on plane zero on the surface and when I do that you'll notice here it does not show me the Z because it knows that I'm in a 2D world in a sense. Okay, so that shows you how to work with third-party data. We can You can drag in almost any mind design format into Survey Excel. That includes SERPAC string files, DTM files from SERPAC. It includes data mine files, data mine string files, data mine block models, point files, and so on, and string files as well from data mine. You s this is MicroStation design files we're showing you. You can bring in AutoCAD files, shape files, almost any format. You just drag them in. They will be remembered in your session. If I close this session, it will remember all the files I've referenced. It does not copy the data from the files. It references them from where you um, specified them. So if I were to update this design file here, for if it was on a server, and I reopen Survey Excel the next day, it will bring in the new updated data. Alright, so that's basically the graphic area. You've got options to turn on grids. If you want a grid over your area, you can turn on a grid. It gives you the um, the readings, the northings and easting values here. If you want to, you can um, set the grid properties. And um, you can do that from the scene here where you can specify the grid properties. coordinate grid you can specify the x-axis gap the width and so on exact and as you need okay so that basically shows you then the environment that we can have uh, in surveying when we're doing our surveying we can bring in all these external files and um, use them as a backdrop you can bring in ventilation data you can bring in mine closure data shape files from mine closure data. You can even bring in images. I'll give you an example here. Here is a, an ERDAS image. It's quite a big one, 65 meg. No problem. You just drag it in. Being an ERDAS image, it's auto-referenced, so it knows where it is in space and it will automatically goes there, but there's my image. You can zoom in and zoom out as usual. If you want to see how it fits with Google, you can bring, turn on Google. And there you go, that's where it fits in and with Google. And we can turn off our coordinate grid. This will also be saved when you um, close the program. It will remember it for you. And of course, if you don't need it anymore, you can just remove the layer. What it's, what it's explaining, telling me about here, it's not to do with changes to the actual file, but to changes to the settings of the file. When I loaded that file, it's it set up settings for the file saying where it's located, etc. And it's talking about those settings here. So I say I want to remove it. You say yes, it's gone. Okay, good. For Bing and Google, to remove them or add them, you just click these buttons here. So um, there's Bing Satellite is that one. I click that, it takes it away. I click it again, it puts it there. It's quite nice to locate your data and see that you're in the right area when you're setting up your projections. But usually when you're working, you don't need them. So it's very easy to turn them off by clicking like that. Google Roads as well. I can remove it and put it back like that. Okay. So this design file, it's still somewhere. It's not in my current screen. To quickly zoom to where it is, I'll just choose this button here, which is Zoom Fit the Layer. And it's an active layer, the one that's highlighted. So actually, to zoom fit to this design file, I need to choose one of the levels because the top level here has no data, but we broke it down into levels. So I can zoom to the boreholes layer and I click zoom and there you go. Zooms to all the boreholes. I can turn the levels on and off. So if I want to turn dikes off, I can turn them off and so on. I can do it in bulk as well. If I select a whole lot here. right click and I can say uncheck all and then I can just check in the ones I want and there you can add them on. So basically you have an option to view your design file as you would view it in MicroStation. Okay very good so I'll remove this for now. Okay so Survey Excel, okay there are a lot of functions here anyway where we can 
add external graphic sources and so on. We won't go into any more on that. What we will go into now is the actual survey side. So to bring up the survey features, there's a survey um, option here. We can click on that. And what that does is it connects to our PEG database, gives us a list of the PEGs, and allows us to now work further with these PEGs and do main sort of survey work. So what we have here is a list of all our pegs. In this case here, we have quite a few pegs. I can get a count here quickly by just putting in a count field. I think it's going to be a number like 85,000. Let's just see. There we go. So it was 85,000 pegs we're working with in the system at the moment. Okay, now what we can do um, with this pegs, this is a full peg register. This, this register here, we can actually, exp you can print it. You can... Um, export it to a CSV file, to Excel, or you can select specific pegs and put them into a different peg group. How Survey Excel works is it works with peg groups. So at the moment, the main peg group, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner, is active. Okay. What it also shows us in this here, just to remind us, it tells us that the viewing projection is this Hart Abias hook, LO27, which matches that one down there. That's just a reminder for us. Okay. Now, each peg group is independent. It, it works on its own. However, um, to flip them, to flip between them, you just click here. It will show you all your peg groups. Here's a, a dummy peg group. It's got no pegs in. I can flip to it. It flips to it. It shows me there's no pegs in it. The idea of peg groups is that they're groups of pegs which will be on their own. They won't ever reference each other, be used as baselines for each other, and so on. So I can flip back to my original group there go back to main and reloads it from the database. These pegs are stored in a central database, so they are secure. Um, it follows all the DMR rules. It's backed up, unique numbers, and so on. Okay, these pegs here are entered into the system in various ways. You can, you can look over here. We've got import export, so we can actually import Actually, sorry, the pegs go in here. We can do a manual input of pegs. When you do that, you can actually just capture them like this. It will create a job for you. You'll be able to see who did this. You can also then, instead of capturing them like that, you can do an import. You can choose a CSV file. And it will allow you to choose. It will ask you which maps to which. In other words, which, which columns are the backside, which columns are the floor elevation for example which columns are the reef elevation and so on if they are and it'll import those pegs for you and when you say save the pegs will be imported into the database for example the pegs which i have in this database now i'm just going to close this window actually were imported in one shot from another peg system okay and to see how what happened to my pegs i can look in the pegs jobs tag here it shows me there's only one job in the system, and that was a manual import, which I did manual peg creation. Surveyor was me. I approved it. I did it into group main, and so on. So, and if I want to see which pegs were involved in that particular import, there they are. So I can actually see them. So this, basically, the system keeps a trail of every operation on pegs, including these peg imports, including um, surveys, and so on. Okay, so that that's basically these pegs. What a typical thing one does is to plot the pegs. So what we can do if we want to choose a couple of pegs to plot, so I'll just choose those bunch. I could choose the whole lot. I can just go right click and I can just say plot. These plot parameters have been set up. They're based upon the peg type and so on. I'll show you later how to set that up, but if I click plot now, it'll just plot those pegs for me and it creates a layer here called normal pegs because that's what I decided I set up for these these pegs here, these peg types, and it plotted them to that layer. To see them, what I can do now, obviously they are plotted wherever they are. To see them, I can just do a zoom fit to that layer and there all the pegs are far away. If I zoom into them, there they are plotted 
as I specify they would be plotted. In other words, I plotted here, I specified that the peg name would be on the left with a border around it. The peg itself will have one circle with a dot in the middle and the uh, elevation, peg elevation will be plotted on the right with a border around it. Those particular settings, they are specified under the codes section here. So I go into codes. Under codes I've got peg groups and you saw I showed you earlier there was Achenais and Main. There they are. Peg types they specified here and what you can do you say make changes to allow changes I right click on normal peg and I can say peg type plot parameters and there I set them up so I had set up that on the left of the peg would be the peg ID which we saw there I said that there would be one circle size would be one meter I could choose to plot at floor elevation if I wanted if there was a floor elevation for the peg on the right hand side I said I wanted a Z value for the peg and I wanted borders around it as well. Okay then over here I said whenever I plot pegs it goes to a layer called normal pegs for these particular pegs. I specify the color for the peg. There you go. It's that brownie color you see it over there. Thickness. The left annotation text color was black as you can see and the right is black and so on. So that's set up for the pegs. This goes into the database so anyone later who plots pegs will get this particular style for the pegs. This ability to make these changes is only allowed to admins. So um, an ordinary user will not be able to change these. All they could do is plot the pegs if they wanted. Okay, cool. So that shows us those things about the pegs. You can also configure your workplaces. There's only one workplace we set here. It will show you the pegs in those workplace. There we go. You can add workplaces. You can automatically create them when you import pegs and so on. Also with the peg types, or with, a, um, with the peg groups, for each group you specify what its projection is. So this particular peg group here, its projection is hard to be so 27 but it also has some local, uh, a local origin. That you specify also in here, and I can show you how we did that. We have got changes allowed, so I can say here, edit projection. Okay, and there it brings up the projection data. Now for this particular projection, if we look in here, I've specified a false northing of 2.9 million, which is a typical thing to do here in South Africa. There's no false easting. And because I specified that, these, pleg these pegs plot true in um, the world space. To prove that, what I'll do is I'll just jump up here, go on to elevation zero so that Google Maps will display. Of course the pegs will still look the same and now if I turn on uh, Google Roads for example we'll see this area here if I zoom out a bit it's actually it's actually the correct area Coltonville area where the mine is so it's quite nice to see. Um, you can actually see where your pegs are compared to the real world out there. Okay, I'll turn off Google Roads. Okay, so that's so much about plotting pegs. Now these pegs plotted goes into this particular layer. You might want to give this to someone who has MicroStation. Well, no problem. You can right click on that layer and you can say save layer data to. You can save it to a spatial database or to a file. Choose save to a file. The options you have here are quite a few. You can save it to shapefile, DXF file, even CSV, AutoCAD, MicroStation, SERPAC string file, data mine files, and so on. So you're, you're able to very easily just export some pegs, save them to a DGN file, or even a CSV file, and give them to some external person. Okay, good. So I can turn off my pegs layer there if I want these plotted pegs or put them on again. Okay, now we can go back here into the actual survey of pegs. So, so far I've shown you some manipulations. Let's go here and see what we can actually do with the pegs. It was manual input, the first thing I showed you. You can do a double setup survey, a double button survey, a single setup or button survey. You can do polar or line setup. 
Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we can actually do create pegs in other ways. I just showed you how to do the manual input. Well, we can now do the double setup. You click on the double setup option. It brings you all the fields here for it. So basically, it divides it up here into a number of tabs. So you've got the back check data you enter first. First of all, here on top is all the peg data. There was a new peg name. Survey is automatically entered. You can choose a setup peg. You can type it in, it'll find it for you. You can choose a workplace. Choose a backside peg. Choose the peg type. And then you put in your back check values. Put in your vertical angle values, horizontal angle values, distances. It'll display the results for you. You can here you can enter a roof height if you want. You can enter, you can work out, you can work with grade elevation. You can do it in various ways. You can do it manually. Um, on, obviously, this is only um, active if you do have grade elevation for your setup peg. And it's grayed out now because we don't have one chosen. You can choose a method, the angle, and so on. And you can, there you can enter the grade elevation of the new peg. You can put in your field book data field book name, page, and then survey comments you can put in here. As you enter the data, it validates. So for example, here the difference columns here are in red because there's no validation on the data. Okay. Now, usually you don't want to type in all this data, so you can load the data straight from an instrument. To do that, we have a separate program called the Instrument Interface. Now, Survey Excel integrates straight with that program. By clicking this button here, it'll actually invoke that program. And there it loads. And when this program loads, you can actually configure it. At the moment, it's configured for a Leica device. Here we go. There's a settings for it. So you can actually go in and see the settings for it here. These are the settings. They are saved in that settings file. If you had a couple of devices on your one particular machine, you can just flip them. Um, over here, we'll choose another settings file straight. So like for example, there's a Topcon settings file I could use and it loads that one. So now it's Topcon. If I want to quickly flip to the Leica, I can go down here and say let's go to my Leica device. Once you've done that, to download your readings, you click the download button. I don't have a Leica device connected at the moment, so the download will just complain and tell me that it's not set up. Okay. However, this program here is flexible. You can actually bring in data from devices also from the device files. So as an example here, I could load a particular device file. I'll load this particular one here. It actually has got the, um, the data in this particular file is, is from the um, Keith Young Surpac um, setup. We've configured this to be able to read that. And we use the settings file. This is the settings file that we set up. It, um, there's the data and we just set it up for it. It automatically remembers it for me now. I set this up earlier and if I say OK, it brings in my survey data here. So there's my survey, there's my setup, there's the back check and there's the um, back check and then the and so on, all the uh, forward, set, uh, forward um, measurements. And what I could do is, once I've, I've seen this here, if I wanted to bring this into Survey Excel, I will just click here, Load Selected. Load Selected will bring it in. First of all, it warns me that this peg, which is in my file that I'm using, is not found, which is fine. This is just a demo. And so it also tells me that this is a double setup. So there needs to be another setup in the set for it to load correctly. And it told me that that's the case. But anyway, just for illustration, it showed me it load the values and so on. So actually, this the data in the instrument at the moment is for a, is for a um, a double button, not a double setup. So what I can do then, let's just close here, throw away my data, and let's do a double button. And I can then just load select it into here. Still pegs were not found, which is correct, but now it loaded the data correctly and didn't mind. Okay, because it didn't find the setup peg, of course it couldn't do this um, check over here. But anyway, there it is, just to show you how the data comes in. 
very easily from the instrument if you do it like that. And all the red boxes are there is because the checks are failing. Anyway, once you're ready, there's no results because we have got a setup peg. But once you're ready, you can actually save um, this file and um, save the peg um, calculation. Now, Survey Excel won't let will won't let you save the calculation if there's errors, if you exceed tolerance too far. There are settings for the tolerance, which I can show later, where you can specify the class of survey and so on, and what tolerances are allowed. Okay, good. So I can't print this peg because uh, it hasn't been calculated. For example. When you do print the peg setup, you can um, it gives you you can have templates which you can define, which um, you can create in Word to specify exactly how you want your print um, your print to look. Okay, so we're not going to survey this peg, so I'll just close this here. There we go. Summary for single setup button. It'll be similar. There's just less data to enter, and so on. What we can do also while we're about it in the system is say for example on a double setup you can limit the system to not allow you to have to in other words if you choose a particular setup peg it'll automatically use the backside of that setup peg um, as the base some you can also configure to allow reverse base and you click reverse base and it'll flip it for you and you can also configure in your settings to allow any base where you can like now where you can just choose any peg as your setup peg and any other peg as your um, backside peg. Okay, there we go. So that's basically the, the peg surveying side of things. I'll just close it now. So you can also import data straight from inside here from Model Maker, SERPAC, Data Mine, CSV. XYZ or straight from an instrument, for example, offsetting from an instrument. Now we've got the typical survey calculations. We can do a full traverse calculation with Bardich correction. Basically, it goes like this you set up, you have your setup pegs, and you work along and you add, and it builds up your whole traverse. And for each record you're clicking over here, it shows you the back check values, horizontal, vertical angles, etc. And it will do the Bardich correction automatically for you. It, it um, can work in a loop and it does all those things for you. So we have the traverse thing, it saves it as a job. And the new pegs calculated will be saved to your peg register as long as tolerances are not exceeded. Okay, so we can also do offsetting. With offsetting, you can again, you can you can choose the layer you want to put your offset um, calculations onto. Then you can specify your the peg where you're setting up on. You can pick it from the from the um, graphics if you want as well. You specify your tape positions X Y Z start and end, and then. On each side, you can enter your left value, your along the tape value, and your right value. As you enter them, it will draw it for you over here. You can do typical offsetting that way. Of course, you can just import straight from an instrument, which is the modern thing to do. But anyway, if you're still using tapes, you can do that. So we've also got the join option here. I choose my start peg and my end peg and I can choose calculate and there you go it gives me all the data for my join the template here that it creates is configurable and um, we can configure that in the settings but this is the default template for the join I can print it or I can close okay good the other option is to measure so what we can do here is, it does bulk measurements basically, you can select a whole lot of elements um, in your graphic area and it's going to tell you per level, per type, um, the length, the area and the volume. And you can use that for certain um, calculations or monthly reports and so on. 
Okay, and then we also have the option to calibrate Schuler means, to calibrate transit, to calculate Schuler means, and to calculate transits. All the data is here, you can enter and so on. Full gyro support. And then also we have our surface operations, which I will show you next. So basically the simplest way to work with surfaces is you can work with them straight here in this um, in the survey option here or you can work with them straight in Survey Excel. I'll show you how to do it straight in Survey Excel because it's very simple that way. I'm just going to remove our pegs layer. We don't want that anymore. So I'll just remove it. Remove layer. There we go. Now, what we can do with our surface building give you an example here. So what we've got is we've got some some survey files here. We've got um, a base set of points which I can just drag in. The XYZ, the system recognizes it. I just drag it in. I choose my projection as well. So I use scene projections. I drag them in. They're all the base survey points. Okay. We can have a quick look and just see. Let me click on my vertex snap again going to rotate about one of them. So there we go. I wait for my cursor to change. Control, click, drag. And I just want to look and see they're pretty flat if we look on the side there. It's pretty flat. So there we go. All right. Very good. Quickly set my view to the top again. I click here where the eye is. I go top. I'm done. I'm not really worried about my elevation for now. We can close that. Okay. So that, that's our base set of points. Now what we can do is we want to maybe create a base surface from those points. Um, it's very easy. All we do is let's select the points. So the number of ways you can select. These, these are all selection tools here where my mouse is. That just selects a single item by clicking. One click selects, another click deselects. That selects in, inside a box, which I think will work for us. So here we go. I'll choose it. I'm going to choose all those points there. Okay, now to build a surface, very straightforward. I can just say from points. Now that'll build a surface only from points found in the scene. You can have break lines if you want as part of the elements you've selected, in which case you choose surface from selection and it'll use those, those break lines as real break lines in a surface building. But do not worry about that right for now. I'm just going to build a surface quickly, so I just click from points. It tells me again, do I want that layer to have the same projection? I say, yes, of course I do. There we go, created a new layer called surface, new surface with those points. I'll just hide the points for now, so I just see my surface, and there's my surface. Okay. All right. Um, what I can do now is I want to give that a, a nice name, so I can just double-click to change its name here, and I'm going to call this base. Good. There we go. And... What I can do now, I've got these points selected. It's, it's 1047. I can unselect them quickly by clicking here. Okay, good. All right, so there are those points and that surface. So let's now bring in the tops, which is this aerial survey of the actual dumps. I just do the same thing, drag it in. The system knows, asks me the projection. It knows everything and it puts them in. So this has got a few more points. It's actually 94,000 points. Okay, so what we can do, just so we can work with it nicely, I'm going to hide the base points and the base and the base points. And I'm just leaving these, po these points we've just brought in here. Here they are. Good. So what we can do now is I've hidden those. So now when I select, I'll just be selecting these. I can use the same select here select all the points I want to build a surface with. And from points, it'll build my surface. There we go. Same thing using same projection. There's my new surface. Let me just deselect everything to make it clearer. And let's probably hide my original points because they're confusing everything and there's my new surface now 
we've we use two renderers in survey excel the default renderer is just a gdi renderer which doesn't render surfaces so well and it's a little bit slower so we might as well flip to the um, better renderer which is a directx renderer here we go directx i'll choose that and um, there you go you get a much better rendition and you get much better performance let's have a look at our surface here we've got our, our snap on so when i rotate at least i'll be rotating about the surface but there you go get an idea of the actual surface now as i rotate up i'm rotating into the view plane you see here so it's being cut off with my view plane so all i can do quickly to bring it all in is just zoom fit to that selected layer there you go and now we can see our whole surface there you go that's our surface we've just built about a hundred thousand points and we quickly built the surface okay well we have the two surfaces actually so let's put in the base as well and see where that is there's the base below it you can see it showing through a little bit and this is over there what we're able to do right now since we have these two surfaces is to do a cut and fill so if we wanted to get the volume um, uh, between the base and this we can just use our cut and fill option I we'll look for it over here under surface operations cut and fill so what we're going to do we're going to choose our base surface here so quick way to do it is I can use my select by by clicking so click once select it click again deselect it so that's the base surface I'm going to say here to it add selected my new surface or the um, change surface I'll going to just deselect here and select my new surface that is it over there I'm going to say add selected good it's added it there now I can choose a perimeter if I only want to do the cut and fill in a perimeter I could trace a perimeter here and add it but I'm not going to do that I can also choose that I want the cut and fill broken down into strata um, I could if I want I could set them but I don't really need any I choose my cell size over here for the cut and fill operation I then just click cut and fill okay there we go it does the cut and fill for me and it tells me here there we go because I only had one level it tells me the cut is 50 5,000 um, 5,000 square meters but the full is 142,000 square meters and there's the result it also gives me two the resultant surfaces the cut full the cut surface and the full surface so anyway there's a very quick way to do cut and fill now what you could do is you could break it down into levels for example so um, I could set my levels here so let's just say I want 10 levels interval 2 go ok gives me 10 levels now I do my cut and fill it shows me the values per level which can be useful and of course my result surfaces are the same so there we go very quick way to do cut and fill operation and um, there are the results for it Okay, so that's cut and fill and surface building as you can see um, using surface so using survey excel now what we can do how about some contouring of the surface so we can use a contour option this is still selected so I've got it there let's go into contour so I can choose um, the direction of the contours this the system lets you contour even along a tunnel if you want so we'll just use a default direction which is just Z in a Z direction so it's just vertical and now I can choose what will the levels be involved I can say compute from selected and it will automatically work it out it'll say that if I have an interval of 10 meters I'm going to have two um, two uh, of them and it's going to start at that level and it's going to end at that level so I might want to start at a nice round level so I'll make it start slightly lower and then there's my end level 
and I might to make sure that it does everything I might make it do three okay so all I can do now if I want contours I can just click the contour button again new layer its projection and there it's created those contours for me they're not very many but there they are and we could turn off our surfaces to see our contours there they are there the contours are not very interesting because they're so few but we could do it but what could be more interesting to do is we won't do those kinds of contours let's do a kind of hill shade which is a much more fun sort of thing to do so we look here at the new surface we still have it selected we'll go back into our contouring and let's make the interval let's make it two meters so we have a lot more and compute from selected so we're going to have 10 okay we don't really mind with beginning and end and we're going to say make them closed so i'm going to say contour same thing now what it's done now it's made a new surface for me which let me take off the selection here it's made it looks like the same surface there is a difference though it has been split up into those contour levels so i can now go into the surface and use our analytics capability here and i'm going to put colors on this new surface which has an extra column added called the level from so let me just do color maybe, maybe based on number ranges. Let's do a best fill. So it's going to color from low values will be green and high values will be red. Okay, and I say okay. And there we go. We've got a nicely shaded. You can see the, con if you look carefully there, you can actually see the contours where they are. See how it's split. So it's a nice way to actually see um, catchments and um, drainage of water and so on so where it's green is where there's going to be water and in fact you can Im imagine that as water a water level there you go another another feature of survey excel now these these surfaces actually you we can actually as you can do in model maker we can actually flip triangles on them as well there are options to do that all sorts of options surface editing can delete facets, can trim them, delete vertices and so on. Won't necessarily go into that now, but you can do those various operations on the surface. Okay, so that really covers the surface side. Let's see what else we can do. You can actually build surfaces between rings and so on is another option which I can probably show you let me just hide this here well actually maybe one of the nicest options to do here is probably let's build a quick conceptual pit so we can actually do quite a lot of open pit operations here so let me let me start off here by viewing from the top okay what we'll do is let's let's just choose our elevation to be let's let's assume we're going to work on on zero and what we can do let's say we want to we've got a, a sort of pit boundary from somewhere uh, i'll draw one in quickly because we don't have one so i'll just draw one in that's how you draw i'm going to click here so maybe there's my outline of this pit. To close my polygon, I just press C. It's going to close it. Now it's asking me, it's saying there's no active layer set because drawing goes to an active layer. Do you want to create a new layer? Yes, definitely I do. So I'm going to create a new layer here. I'm going to call it pit outline. I'll just call it pit actually. That'll be on my new one I'm going to work with. Okay. So there it is. It's given me red thick lines for my pit. Now, if I wanted to quickly do a conceptual pit here, so what I could do, using one of our options here, we've got project out option. And what we do here is we're going to choose where does it start from. So we're going to say it's going to start from this pit here. So let me choose by clicking as usual. There it is. And it wants me to, it wants me to copy it. So I'm going to go here 
edit copy it says paste from clipboard so now it knows the border now what I can do is I can decide to um, make copies of this at different elevations up and down so I'm going to say well I want the first one the first one I want to be exactly on this particular on this particular um, boundary there it is but the next one is going to be in the horizontal position I want it to move inwards so it's going to be minus two meters inwards and it's going to be 45 degrees it's going to be minus two down so that's what it's going to be there we go and I want to copy 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 well there we go I'm getting a nice conceptual pit here okay uh, to get an idea that it how it looks let's just have a quick look here just rotate it there we go you can see we're definitely getting good conceptual pit okay for quick for quick um, design and idea you can use this let's say that was my pit and I'm quite happy with that now I've got an option to draw it as lines or to actually build a surface straight away but to illustrate our surface building I'm going to just first draw it as lines so I'm going to draw it as lines and there we go I can now close this here now I can take away my selected here we go I have these lines here making my concept making from my conceptual pit there we go and I zoom fit to see everything and there we go okay there it is now let's just say I wanted to make a surface out of this quickly it's also very easily very easy so what I'll do here is let's go back to our selection quickly select these here I can say select intersecting lines I just do that I want to select them all I've got them all selected now I go back to my surfaces and I go here from line strings yeah I think it's this one here let's see yes there we go there's our surface it put them into the same into the same layer so let me just undo that and make the layer not active because it always draws into the active layer let's double check it's not active right there you go it's not active so now if I do the surface from string from line strings it's going to ask me for the new layer which is what I want there we go and now I can take that away and look there is my surface which is zoomed to it properly surface from those line strings so there you go I've created a surface for my pitch there now what I can do is if I want to get a volume of the surface I can't really do it quite now because it's it's open so again the same old tricks I'll just unselect everything else I'm going to select it then we have an option here to close the surface so we'll say close there we go my surface is closed and if I rotate we can see it's closed it's cutting the surface cutting the view plane there but there we go it is definitely nicely closed and of course having that surface I can now use my inspector tool for example click there tells me there it is let's go into measurements there we go there's my volume of my conceptual pit area if I wanted everything this particular pit I could save to a DXF file, to a microstation design file, whatever, and give to someone else. Another example of some survey or some conceptual um, modeling in Survey Excel. There are options if you have an image which is not registered, you can actually load it in and register it with this tool here. There are various um, analysis functions you can do which we won't necessarily go into over here you can create grids heat maps and so on we don't necessarily have to go into those things here and then with strings we've got various things to convert polygons to strings strings to polygons close strings smooth them and so on draping to view plans etc those can be a subject of a different video 
various selection options drawing and then view we also can have multiple views so what I can do right now is let's assume this is my current view I can let's just say let me create let me show four views there you go in this particular view I'm going to zoom fit to it I'm looking at it like that now if I want to see the standard four views from this view I can just click here standard from current and it gives me the different views of the same spot here if I zoom in a little bit more you can do standard from current and there we go you can see where we are so we can actually work looking at in 3d in um, the many views so typically here I might want to view from the top over there let's get that back from the top and let's zoom it so there's my top view let's get standard from current here and you can get it from the various views so there's from the one side from the other side and this is um, orthogonal each of these is just another view you can actually work in each one independently you can also just work if you just want to work two side by side you can do that two vertical you can do that and if you want your one view back you can do that and there we go so there are multiple views available uh, when you're doing more tricky um, survey stuff all right now one more thing actually in survey itself so we've done and there's utilities so we've got some utilities here we can plot a coordinate grid as well we can do offline mining calculations basically what that will do is it'll take planned actuals and do a difference between them and give you calculations it's particularly used for board and pillar mines where you've got safety factors and you want to be sure you don't have any over mining and so on we also have tools to make a pillar from points to make a line from points and to make pillars using a grid all points within each grid cell will be made into a pillar there we go it's a quick overview of some of the bay of the main features of survey excel it is a very big program there's lots of extra features hidden in it connection to spatial databases um, various complex layer operations and so on but this should be a nice introduction to the tool